Hello and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So we're going to be doing a slightly different video today, which is about background material, specifically in discrete math and in this case, set theory. So here we have two sets. And if you happen to not know what a set is, that's just a collection of distinct objects. So here in the first set, A, I have three numbers in it, 0, 1, and 2. There's no duplicate. And B is the set 0, 2, 3. So each of these two sets has three things, although they're not the same set. The order doesn't matter. So 0 doesn't have to be first. It's just a collection. The order doesn't matter. So here we're going to look at various questions about these sets. So the first one says, is A a subset of B? So what you should be thinking about whenever you see this is, is every element in A also in B? So it's saying, is the zero element in B? Yep. Is the one element in B? Nope, because B has zero, two, and three. Because one is not in B, so the answer is no in this case. So because the element one is not in B. And the way that we write this is one is not in B. So this little, the little E symbol means in, and with a little slash through it, it means not in. So one is not in B. Um, so every element in A is not in B. So the question here is, is B a subset of A? Well, let's see, the zero elements in A? Yep. Is the two in A? Yep. Is the three in A? No. So therefore the answer is also no, because the element three is not in A. Now let's look at this question, which is asking, is the number of elements in A equal to the number of elements in B? So these little vertical bars here are indicating what is called cardinality. What is the cardinality of a set? That just means the number of elements in that set. So the cardinality of A is three because there are three elements in it. The cardinality of B is also three because there are three elements in it. It doesn't matter um, if the sets are different or not, which they are in this case. As long as they have the same number of elements, that's all we care about for this question at least. So the answer in this case is yes, because each has three elements. So their cardinalities are the same. Okay, so then now let's look at this question, which is what is this funny thing and remember the vertical bars mean the number of things in that set. So what is this P thing right here? This is something called the power set. And what is that? That is the set, if I can write it correctly, set of all possible subsets uh, of A in this case, because I'm providing A right here. So what are all the possible subsets of A? Well, let's just write them all out. So the power set of A just by itself is all the possible subsets of A written as a set. So it is a set itself, but it, each of the things in it is a subset of A. So one possible subset is we just don't pick any of the elements in A. Well, that's a valid subset because Everything that we picked is an A. Well, there's nothing in there, so everything in it is an A. So the power set of A contains something called the empty set. So this little symbol here means the empty set. Well, we could also pick all of the choices of picking one element. So I can either just pick just zero or just one or just two. So I can have the set zero, the set one, the set two. I could have any way I can choose two distinct elements of, of the set A. And in this case, there happen to be three ways of doing that. So I can do zero one, I can do zero two, 
and I can do one, two. But I also, I could pick the entire set itself, which is all three elements, which is perfectly fine. So zero, one, two. And that's all the possibilities because I can't pick more than three elements since A itself only has three elements. Well, if we count these up, we can see, ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number of elements in the power set is eight. So the answer is eight in this case. And what I would like you to figure out is, can we show a um, what the number of elements in the power set when A has more elements than three? If A has 10 elements, do we know how big the power set is? Okay, so now let's think about these questions. So this one is asking the union of A and B. So the little U there represents union. And what is union? That means just take everything in A and everything in B and put them all together and eliminate duplicates if there are any. So in this case, let's make a, let me go back to purple. So we can make the set which has everything in A in it, but let's add everything in B also into the set that we're making right here. Well, we've already added zero and two already into this set. The only thing that we haven't added is three. So the union here is just combining all of the things in both sets. So the answer is zero, one, two, three in this case. Now let's look at this one. So this upside down U represents something called intersection. And what this is, is everything that is in common between the two sets, the elements that are in both, subset, uh, both sets here. Well, in this case, it happens to be just zero because it's in both sets. It's not one because it's not in B. Two's in both sets. And three is not in both sets. So the intersection here is just the set zero, two, and nothing else. Now, what is this symbol, funny symbol here? This is something called set difference, or just difference. And what is that? Set difference here means everything in A, but not something in B. So let's write down the things that are in A. So everything in A, which is zero, one, two. And let's take away from this set right here, anything that happens to also be in B. So what is that? Well, zero and two are also in B. So I'm gonna take those away. So therefore, I will end up with the set one. So it's the L everything in A that is not in B. And in fact, the answer is gonna be exactly what we have up here, because this was the only example of an element not in B. And for this one down here, now we're asking everything that is in B and not in A. Well, let's write down the things that are in A, in B in this case, zero, two, three. And let's take out everything in A. Well, again, that is just zero and two. So therefore we end up with the set three and we could easily predict that because this was the only example of an element not in A before. And then finally, we need to look at this question which is a times B. So what does times mean for sets? This is something called the Cartesian product. So what is a Cartesian product? It's something, uh, a set of ordered tuples. And I'll explain what that is. So it's a set of ordered tuples, tuples. And what is a tuple? It's essentially like a list of numbers. So a tuple is just like a list of numbers. So there is an order to them, but there can be duplicates in that. So for example, the way that we write this is with parentheses and then some contents that are separated by commas. So for example, we could have, let's just say uh, zero, four, two, that would be a tuple of length three. 
So the tuples that we're making here are going to be of the form something in A paired with something in B. Anything in A can be paired with anything in B. So let's familiarize ourselves what A and B are. So A was 0, 1, 2, and B was 0, 2, 3. So what we need to do for the Cartesian product here is always going to be a set, always a set, and every element is going to be a tuple of size 2. The first thing in the tuple is going to be something in A, and the second thing in the tuple is going to be something in B. So let's just pick something in A, anything that we want. Let's just say 0. So, uh, yeah, let me turn off notifications. So here we have 0 um, picked in A. Now we just pick something in B. Well, let's pick 0 again. Again, a tuple could have duplicates in it. So here we can have 0, 0. Then we could have 0, 2, because we can pick 0 in A and 2 in B. We could do 0 and 3 by picking 0 in A and 3 in B. We could pick 1, 0, where 1 comes from A, 0 from B. Remember, the order actually matters here. We could pick 1, 2, which is picking 1 in A, 2 in B. We could pick 1, 3 for the same reason, and 2, 0, which is picking 2 in A, 0 in B. We could pick 2, 2, and finally we can pick 2, 3. We can't pick 3, 2 because that would be B's element coming first and A's coming next. So therefore, the Cartesian product with three things in A, three things in B, will always have nine elements. And could you determine, so maybe write in the comments if you can figure it out, the number of elements in the Cartesian product if you know the number of elements in A as well as the number of elements in B. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find these answers a different way. As always, please subscribe. We have uh, a growing following on my Discord server, so if you want to contribute to the channel, the link is down in the description, as well as all the other social media that I post these to. And as always, I'll see you next time.